gives you enough time to allow your staff to be educated on what two-factor is, why it's important, and how to set it up so they don't try and log in one day and all of a sudden they're locked out of their account. If you enforce this policy immediately and someone is not enrolled, they may not be able to access their account. In admin security users report, what is users enrolled and not enrolled? So let's dive into our admin panel. So we're gonna to go to reporting, user reports, security. If you're looking at your security report here and you are saying that some people are enrolled and some people are not enrolled, what this is referring to is at the top of the menu here, two-step verification. So what that means is some people do not yet have two-step verification enrolled for your user accounts. And that's actually a pretty big issue for your business because it means that if someone's password is compromised, well, then their account can easily be compromised. Now you'll see here, if I scroll through, I'd be very surprised to find anyone who's not enrolled. It looks like this might be a new user who's been configured here and not yet enrolled, but our team typically have to enroll straight away by policy, otherwise they get locked out of their accounts. Now, how do you set an effective two-factor authentication policy? I'll show you how to do that. So for us to set up our two-factor authentication, we go into our security menu, and then authentication, and then two-step verification. And you have the ability here to set a policy for the whole company. And if you wish, you can even set a policy just for groups of users using the organizational units feature. So if you haven't yet set a policy for two-factor authentication, what this effectively means is when someone joins your company, they're gonna be forced to set up a second factor of authentication. And my ideal is that you don't use mobile phones for this. Ideally, you wanna use a push notification that goes through to a app of some sort or a six digit code that is generated by a code generation app. So let's have a look at how to switch it on. You can see here, I've got it switched on here. Enforcement is on for us and there is a new user enrollment period. Now, my recommendation if you're just setting this now would not be to immediately enforce it. My recommendation would be to switch it on from a certain date and that might be a week or two in the future. Now, what that does is it gives you enough time to allow your staff to be educated on what two-factor is, why it's important and how to set it up so they don't try and log in one day and all of a sudden they're locked out of their account. If you enforce this policy immediately and someone is not enrolled, they may not be able to access their account. The other thing that's important for you to set is an enrollment period. So you can actually choose what the grace period is for someone to get their two-factor authentication set up when they first join your company. So when a new account is created, you may choose to set a day or even up to a week where they can enroll into two-factor authentication. My recommendation would be no longer than one week unless you have a really good reason for that because you wanna get people into the habit of using their second factor device pretty much from day one when they start working for your company. So if right now you're ready to get started on rolling out a policy, my recommendation is you give it a little bit of grace time for people to get enrolled and for newbies that get started in the company, you give them up to a week to get started when they join in the future. Now there is another setting here you can see, you can choose between allowing someone to use any method to connect or any method except text versus phone call. And this is actually my strong recommendation. We haven't yet implemented this one for our team. We're still managing some change management and some service accounts that this is not compatible with. But you can see here that this setting allows you to set an enforcement that someone has to use a mobile device code generator in an app or they have to use a plug-in key of some sort, like a physical key that you, you know, tap and press a button on the side of your computer, or you can even use push notifications as well, which are also better than a six digit code to your mobile. Because people can steal mobile numbers. The threat that you have is that if someone gets access to your mobile phone by calling your internet service provider or your phone provider, pretending to be you with your identity, and then yanking that number over to a fresh SIM card that they've just bought, Unfortunately, they're gonna be able to get access to your account pretty easily, and we don't want that. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.